sunny Miami Beach, Zinsky Spiegelman presents the fifth annual international Miss Beautiful Python. Tell Fingerman to come down here and direct the show or stick it up his nose. Give me a shot of the seals, will you, Lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the booze, huh? Here they are, the names of the five semi-finalists. Oh, my. Well, what happened? Where'd he go? Thank you, my dear. I asked you to come to my room tonight. But at my age, I can't even risk taking long naps. <laughs> Kidding, of course. And now, the finalists. Count me three, get me a single on Cindy Lou. This beautiful pageant. We have the first finalist. The land of and honey. No, 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 not faces, dummy. Give me some R&B. Camera 3 wants to know what R&B means. Rumps and bumps, dummy. The world's most beautiful fighting female from Israel, Miss Reba Barlev. <laughs> Get off it, Harvey. Thinkerman doesn't like that. That's what they want to see in East Nowhere, Ollie. Get off it, Harvey. It's bad taste. Take one. Now, our next finalist, one of those wonderful people who gave us big of it, Buck Meal and Dino Schnitzel. <laughs> the pride of West Germany, Miss Lenny Schenkel. <laughs> Notice 
Jefferson's, but she has pretty eyes, too. And now, our third finalist from the homeland of Elizabeth Taylor, the Beatles and Twiggy, the Vacious, wisecracking, Tony McDuff. <laughs> There are only five to be chosen. Our fourth finalists come from sunny, lovely St. John in the Virgin Islands, shy and beautiful, Miss April Garland. <laughs> To her ring. I can't believe he actually said that. And finally, our last finalist, which fills my heart with patriotic pride, from the land of the free and the home of the brave, our own Liberty Bell, no crap, please. But it's pretty blue card. I'd like to spend a weekend with her. Oh, I love it. Big Mark would be there, too, though. <laughs> She's the most beautiful girl in the world. And she stands with a proud flag unfurled. She's so pure. She's so fine, how oh, I wish she were mine, the most beautiful girl in the world. Hey, to black. Amen. Cindy Lou, how many times have I got to tell you, stop biting your nails? I'm not, Mama. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tired. This ain't no time to be tired. We have been working for this since your first hair ribbon. I know, Mama. When I think of the things I've done to get money for your elocution lessons, your tap lessons, your braces, your clothes. I know, Mama. And try to be a little more appreciative, child. Well, I ain't even working my butt off as a chaperone, just as I can be with you. Ah, oh, no, Mama. When you're around these people from the pageant, you've got to shine. You've got to let your beauty come pouring out of you like the sunlight. That's when they notice you. Mm -hmm. You take one of these little caffeine pills. Keep it cheerful. Sid, I'm telling you, they won't allow anybody on the airfield. I don't know, some turkey from airport security. Look, Sid. Look, look, I, I, I don't think that kind of talk with anybody. Oh, not for the money you're paying me, Sid. Okay. Okay, sorry. I, I'm a little hot. But cheap is cheap. I mean, that World War II seaplane, is that the only thing we could charter? Yeah, well, I hope it can fly. It's all right, Max, we'll walk back. Oh, too? Hmm? 
Raleigh Royce, press and publicity, Miss Beautiful Pageant. What can I do for you? It's what you're doing to me, not for me. What? We've got 200 fans out there waiting to cheer their contestants on to victory. Now, how come you're not allowing them on the field? For one reason, Mr. Royce. I don't want World War III to start at my airport. You can bend the rules, O'Toole. Mr. Fingerman, the promoter, he spent thousands. Mr. Royce, if anything should happen to those girls, it could trigger an international incident. As long as I'm security chief, only the press is allowed on the field. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to the tower and see that your flight gets off all right. I'll get you for this, O'Toole. Can't wait. That's it, girl. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Sure. One this way, very nice. Thank you. Come on, Tony. Come on. Good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hold it, ladies. Let's have a few for the press. Miss Shakel, how about a nice deep breath? Don't touch yourself. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Turn around and smile. A little later, baby. Show him a little later. <laughs> That's the girl. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Marv, give us a nice big one. Come on. How are you? Beautiful, great. And Miss Malloy? Miss Gloria Ludlam, Womankind Magazine. You won the Miss Beautiful contest a few years back, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Well, I was reading this book, you know, by a former Miss America. Whole chapters of the book were devoted to how to wash your face and perspiration. I mean, aren't these women demeaning themselves? I don't judge them. Oh, uh, do you do you admire them? All I know is they're up there all alone, day after day, giving everything they've got. They say, okay, world, this is me, like it or not. They risk disappointment, rejection, and heartbreak. Yes, I admire them for that. You make it all sound so glamorous. What did you get out of it? Well, I was a winner. Not many people can say that. Well, how does it feel now to be a loser? You tell me, Miss Ludlam. I think that's going to have to go below. Hello? Michael, me boy, how are you? Fine. Is 609 ready yet? You mean that beauty pageant charter? Hang on. Willie, check out Barney Jessup, will you? 609er, this is the tower. Advise ETD. Tower, this is 609er, ready to taxi in five minutes. Clear? Aren't you going to fly the plane? Uh, no, I'm deadheading down to Nassau. Pick up another flight. I'm Paul Fabiani. Cindy Bear. Nice to meet you, Cindy. Excuse me, Captain. Would you happen to have a cigarette? Oh, I'm sorry. I only smoke cigars. Oh. Ivana. Thank you. Not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats, fasten your seat belts, and observe the no smoking sign. Thank you. Tower, this is 609er, ready to roll. Over. 609er, you are clear. Take off on runway 27R. Wind, 8 knots, northeast. Clear. Have you ever been to Nassau, Miss McDuff? Uh, no. Well, maybe I could show you around. That's against the rules, isn't it? Only if you've been caught. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Boston Bar, Mr. Parker. Oh, well, thank you. Got to watch the old tummy, you know? <laughs> Both I should, too, but I can tell you truthful, I love these lost parts. <laughs> now, my daughter, Cindy. Cindy Luke. Oh, yeah. Cindy Luke. <laughs> Lovely child. Why, she can eat 60 of these and not gain a single ounce. <laughs> Just keep that creamy complexion, you know? Ever since her daddy was killed when that tractor turned over on him, I just ain't been able to stop. Oh, when she wins for this beautiful title, I'm gonna go to one of them milk farms. Would you believe when I was her age, I could wear a neck ribbon around my waist? I was that small. <laughs> Why, everybody in Pear Blossom said I was just the prettiest thing they ever did see. Pear Blossom, California, that's where we're from. You been out there? Excuse me, I didn't hear you. What were you saying? Pear Blossom. Thank you, I don't care for fruit. <laughs> Pear Blossom, California, that's where we're from. You been out there? No, never. Well, you come by sometime and I'll show you some real good cooking. Oh, bring your wife, of course. Oh, oh did I recently read that you're divorced again? Oh, I've never been married. You don't say. Sure you don't want a loss in bar? I wouldn't worry. Pilot's in control. How long have you been in the beauty contest business? Ever since I was a little girl. Do you like it? Never thought about it. You're very beautiful. Mama says I have all the equipment. Don't you feel beautiful? Feel beautiful? Yeah. Mr. Fabiani, beautiful is the way you look, the way you feel. Six zero nine er, this is Miami. Do you copy? Charter six zero nine er, this is Miami. Don't answer that. Hey, keep it under 200 feet. Set a course for 165 degrees south. You'll kill us. <laughs> Just do like I say. 609er, this is Miami. Do you copy? Charter 609er, this is Miami. Over. Hijack! <laughs> Tell 
passengers everything is okay. Tell them we're flying low because the cabin pressure is out. Come on, tell them, damn you! Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Jessup. Uh, we're going to fly at 200 feet for a while due to a problem with the cabin pressure. However, everything is under control and there's no cause for alarm. What's going on? I demand to know what's going on! Take it easy, Mr. Parker. It's all right. How far from the airport did you lose him? 38 miles. Any report of a crash or anything? We did have a burst of transmission, but we're not sure it was 609. What was it? Well, Willie here thought he heard the word hijack. Let's hope he was wrong. Try him again, huh, Willie? See that stretch of beach down there? Put this thing down offshore. Can't do that. There might be a reef under that water. It's dangerous. Land the plane, Mac. They'll kill us all. Mac! Just do it! Pretty please. I'll have to tell the passengers. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Barney Jessup again. I'm afraid we're going to have to make an emergency landing. Everything's under control. There's no cause for alarm. Use the pillows to cover your faces. Tighten your seat belts. When you hear my announcement, tuck your heads down between your knees. Cindy, we're going to crash! Parker, shut up. You'll panic everybody. Cindy, Just calm down. All right. Stay real cool and nobody will get hurt, okay? Oh. Okay, out. Just stay quiet. Uh. All right, 
just stay cool, huh? And we're all gonna walk out of here nice and easy like. All right, you're gonna get searched, so don't get up tight. All right, starting at this end, move it. Go! Search later. I mean, real interesting. Genuine Cuban cigar, huh? Well, I just confiscate this and I smoke it when I'm a millionaire. the co-pilot. It's all right. You didn't murder before. That makes no difference. Yeah. Where's the body? In the plane. Okay, after dark, go on down there and get rid of the body. We do not need that plane if anything goes wrong with Roman. Yeah. Hey, Roman should be calling our demands just about now. <laughs> Too bad we ain't got a radio. She would like to hear that conversation. <laughs> and inside, inside, eh? Come on, move it. Get it on in. Call the FBI yet. The flight's 20 minutes overdue. Yes, sir, that's right. Headed toward Nassau. No, no, we haven't released anything to the no. public yet. Hang on, we think we got a contact. I'll call you back. Put it on the speaker, will you? Miami Tower, this is flight 609. You read me. This is the Miami Tower. Come in, 609. -er. Miami Tower, we have just liberated flight 609. Let me have that mic, Willie. Please repeat, 609er. We have just liberated flight 609. Who are you and what's your location? This is the International Liberation Army. Is that a joke? You'll find out. We have taken over flight 609. You will receive our demand at 6 a.m. out. Hello, 609er. Hello, do you read me? What's the International Liberation Army? I don't know, but I think it's time we call the FBI. All right, listen up. Anybody tries any funny stuff, gets killed. 
No questions asked. Okay? Now, Layla here can get pretty nasty. Ain't that right, baby? <laughs> you just act right, and you'll all be back home by tomorrow night. If everything goes as planned. You know, uh, me and Buck here, we ain't just bad guys. My Buck, he, uh, he really loves people. Ain't that right, Buck? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Especially the lady. See what I mean? The FBI business. Excuse me, any news? No plane, if that's okay. Uh, these two gentlemen are down from Washington. Uh, Mr. Damon Faulkner. And, Mr. Faulkner. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Smith. Joe Smith. Mr. Smith. Look, Hector, we'll give you everything we've got. It's not much for the FBI to go on, but oh, at least... Hold it, hold it, Mike. The FBI is not going to handle this one. What are you talking about? We have what may be a hijack. No, Mike. The investigation will be handled entirely by Mr. Faulkner and Mr. Smith. Now, what do we need with the Foster Grants, Hector? I don't understand. You don't have to understand, Mr. O'Toole. All you have to know is that this investigation has been classified top secret. That means it's a federal offense to mention outside this office. By whose authority? Mine. Now, look, I've got a plane load of people missing, and I intend to find them if I have to put the Boy Scouts on it. I will allow one call to the outside to be made regarding this matter, Smitty. I think you'll recognize the authority of the person at the other end of the line. Operator, I'd like to make a long-distance phone call to Washington, D.C. My code number is 80437. Calling area code 202-555-6700. Thank you. Extension 101, please. Yes, this is Joe Smith. We are in Miami. Yes, can you put me through to him? Chief of Airport Security needs his okay. Right. Hello, sir. Yes, sir, just a moment. Hello? Yes, this is Michael O'Toole, Chief of Security, Miami Airport. To whom am I speaking, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, your men are here now. Yes, sir, they've informed us. And naturally, I wanted to make sure. All right, thank you, sir. Goodbye. All right, gentlemen, what do we do? We can postpone the search. What? I said postpone the search for them. What about Nassau? They'll be notified that the plane was unavoidably delayed. As far as the outside world is concerned, the plane is not missing, and it will remain not missing for the next 24 hours. Took care of the co-pilot. Sure. You want a little joke? I don't use that stuff. Yeah, I know what you do use, baby. I kick the junk in Rayford. Well, this ain't Rayford. 
I sure hope you ain't gonna get strung out on it. Just don't worry about me, huh? Worry about them. Okay. They all set? Yes, sir. The red phone is to our communication center, the green phone is to our base, the black one is to Washington. The uh, scrambler is on the desk. Thank right. you. You mind if I ask who's searching for that plane? The search is being conducted by our own people. We have a direct line to them, they'll keep us informed. And what are we supposed to do? Our job is just to keep the lid on this. I don't suppose you're going to tell me what's going on, huh? Let me guess. One of the beauty queens is really Princess Margaret, right? You don't want an international incident, right? Okay, I might as well go home. Sorry, you can't leave the airport until after the investigation is completed. You mean I'm a prisoner? Innocent. Can I go to the bathroom? Miss Smitty, forget it. In that case, I think we should go up to the tower and wait for the 6 a.m. communication from the hijackers. Sure, why not? Hey, is this thing as serious as you guys are making out? Or are you just playing James Bond? The security of the United States is at stake, Mr. O'Toole. Please believe that. It's okay. Oh, please try and be strong. I can't take this anymore. I'm a sick man. I demand to see a doctor. Take it easy. Let's get out of here. Get a grip on you. Is there anything you can do? Why do you can't you talk to them? Can't you make them do something? I'm going to upset the others. from this. Anderson is Damon. We're expecting a transmission from 609 momentarily. I want a radio fix as soon as possible. We're ready to triangulate. We're locked into the big dish at Key West in the comm center at Guantanamo, Cuba. Stand by. Benson Faulkner, are you all set there? Ready here, Mr. Faulkner. Getting something on 2030. I mean, this is flight 609. Do you read me? I read you 609. We want one million dollars from the country of each contestant. One million apiece. Do you read that? I read you. Where do you want it? We will transmit the location of the drop at 12 noon. And Miami... Go on. If the five million dollars is not dropped by five o'clock today, 
We will kill one hostage every hour until we get it. Do you read? I read. Five o'clock. Uh, hello. Six zero nine. Hello. Come in. Come in. Ah, he's off the air, Lou. You get a fix? Let me have it. Eighty-two degrees. 25 minutes west, 24 degrees, 40 minutes north. Thank you. That puts it about 90 miles due north of Havana. Yeah, dry tour too, this one. You're going to be looking for the plane in the middle of the Gulf Stream. The middle of the Gulf Stream. <laughs> Beautiful. They're going to find Roman. Don't matter. They can't touch him as long as we get the hostage. He's as safe as a kid in the cradle. All we got to do is just pass the time till he gets here with the money. Then we're going to fly out of here like a bunch of rich birds. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fix on that 609 transmission. Are you prepared to copy? That's 82 degrees, 25 minutes west. 24 degrees, 40 minutes north, probably the drive to Ortugas. We have your orders. We expect another transmission in 1,200 hours. And point the target, carry it to orders. Cuckoo she can get when she needs one. Just keep an eye on her. Do you have a light? I'll try to get him alone. Do you have a match?
No volunteers? Don't do it. Nobody do it. We mustn't compete. I think that you're on deck, Alani. You can't humiliate us like this. I'll be damned if I perform for you like a trick dog. You may be damned if you will, but you gotta be dead if you won't. I won't be bullied. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Miss Pretend, you lose. The take her out and kill her. Target is 82 degrees, 25 minutes west, 24 degrees, 40 minutes north. At 1,200 hours, you will lock in on radio transmission from the target and fire your missile. This is TKO mission. Repeat. This is a total kill operation. <laughs> Charles? April Garland. Uh-huh. And where are you from, honey? St. John. Virgin Island. Oh, Virgin Island. Black, black, black is the color of my true love's hair. His lips are something wondrous fair. The purest eyes and the bravest hands. I love the ground on where him stand. I love. <laughs> Honey, you just have to go and do something that's a whole lot better than that, or you're gonna lose. Now let's have something a little livelier, huh? We're all sexy. Right, right. Well, who's going to be next, huh? Oh, I think it's going to be you, sweetie pie. Come on, sweetheart.
arm. For my number, um, I'll do a, a patriotic military cap man. Oh, right. I, I need a baton. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Captain Thorne, I am ashamed. Miami, this is flight 609, flight 609 to Miami Tower. Come in, Miami. This is Miami Tower. Come in, 609. Okay, Miami, you will drop the money in a flotation bag one mile due east of Boca Chica Key. You got that? Affirmative. If there's any attempt to interfere with the pickup, we start killing. If the drop is not made, you'll have dead hostages. You have the money? Yes, we have the money. what happened to put out of your office and have a private talk or two. I have to type out a press release for you. You son of a... So, tell me, what is your name? How? Oh, tell me, Klaus. What would you like? Klaus, I'll whisper. Oh, no, I can do that. Why not? You're a woman and I'm a dummy. You have a one-track mind. You know that. I think I'll sing you a song, all right? All right. Okay, you sing with me. Du, du liegst mir im Herzen. Du, du bleibst mir im Leben. Du, du machst mir viel Schmerzen. I want you to hear this. It's going to be your press release. Miami Airport reported the attempted at hijacking and crash of a chartered plane belonging to Sunburst Airlines. A plane which was carrying contestants and staff in this beautiful contest disappeared at midnight last night. Radio contact was heard from a group calling itself the International Liberation Army asking $5 million ransom. However, early this morning, search planes located wreckage off the coast of Florida, presumed to be the missing plane, which evidently crashed and exploded near Boca Chica Key. Frogmen lowered from helicopters reported there was no sign of survivors. The identity of the hijacker is not yet known. Several possible leads are being investigated. And that's it. Who do you think you are? I know who I am. You expect me to back up that garbage? Garbage? You freak. You had that plane incinerated. You wiped it off the face of the earth, along with the girls, the crew, everybody. That's ridiculous. Nobody's going to believe a fantasy like that. Maybe before Watergate and the Mafia attempt on Castro, they wouldn't believe it. But they'll believe it now, mister. Well, then you're just going to have to keep it to yourself, aren't you? In a pig's eye, I will. I'm going public on this, Faulkner. I am going to the press and telling them exactly what has happened. I wouldn't do that. You have to kill me to stop. That could be arranged. Better do it now. All right. All right. I got a level with you, O'Toole. Now, what I'm about to tell you is so secret, I could go to jail for even thinking it. 
I'm listening. One of the passengers in flight 609 was a defense agency courier. So? He was carrying a small cylinder disguised as a cigar case. That cylinder contained a, a specimen of virus. A virus so lethal that in sufficient quantities it could destroy the entire population of the United States. I thought we weren't developing biological weapons. We didn't develop it. It was developed in an unfriendly nation. In fact, six of our men died getting that sample. Why was your man carrying it? The virus was being sent to a friendly nation which is doing research in antitoxins against biological weapons. So we can still say we don't develop biological weapons in this country? Look, look O'Toole. It was a joint project. We supplied them with arms. They provide us with top scientists. Then there was another agent aboard the plane to take it back to this friendly nation? That's right. One of the contestants? Exactly. Are you going to tell me who it was? There's no need for that. But if, let us, uh, let us say, one of the hijackers had accidentally opened that cylinder, the entire population of Florida would have been wiped out in less than a week. Now, do you see why we had to incinerate that plane? I don't believe in preventive murder. I'm not interested in your morality, O'Toole. And if any of this leaks, it could prove to be a very great embarrassment to this country. Embarrassment? Faulkner, you make me ashamed to be a member of the human race. Why didn't you try to ransom these people or rescue them? Because we couldn't take the chance. If that container had been opened in an unsealed area, the virus would have spread like wildfire. It had to be totally destroyed. Don't you understand that? How do you guys sleep at night? Sometimes with a great deal of difficulty. Faulkner here. It was what? A fishing boat. Well, that... Did the frogmen go down to inspect the wreckage? Yeah. Yeah, right. I see. All right. Yes, thank you. Cretans! They fouled the whole thing up. They blew up our boat. The hijackers were transmitting their demands from a fishing boat so that they could move it around, pick up their ransom, and still hang on to their hostages. Idiots! We have to start all over again from square one. All right, so you blew it. Will you do me a favor one time? Try it my way. Find them. Pay the ransom. Please. OK, OK. Who haven't we heard from, huh? Who's next in this contest? I'll do my number now, if it's all right with you. Right, right, OK. I'll need a prop, a cigar. Got it. For my number, I would like to do an imitation of one of the great comedians of all time, Mr. Groucho Marx. <laughs> my name is Captain Spaulding, the African explorer. Did someone here play snorer? Hooray, hooray, hooray. I shot an elephant in my pajamas last night. What he was doing in my pajamas, I can't imagine. <laughs>
What are you looking at, you lech? I'd horse with you if I had a horse. Here, hold my cigar while I finish my number. My name is Captain Balding. Say, I forgot it for. Did someone hear my snore? Hooray! 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 <laughs> Captain, what's that? You okay? What? Well, what, what? Give me the cigar. I'm gonna go look out for Roman. His name is Roman Garvey. He escaped from Rayford about six weeks ago. The others are Buck Tiger, Omar Welk, and Layla Burden. Murder is all of them. Yeah, we've got four hours until they start killing. Fuck! Oh, now, for one thing, three ahead of two. I'm not interested in hostages. My only concern is to destroy that cylinder. Off the radar scope. About 40 miles east of the airport. How far could they fly to him? They run out of gas. You think they got the Cuba? No. Guantanamo knows if a moth flies out of Castro's closet. What about Mexico? Air defense would have picked them up. I think they're in the glades. Where could a plane that size land in the Everglades? Did he talk? You think he wouldn't talk? They're holed up in an abandoned sub base in the Keys. Good. We're going to need a helicopter and a special squad. Keep it small. Two riflemen and explosives, man. What about him? He has to go with us. We leave him behind, he could spring a leak and sink the whole ship estate. I want him where I can keep an eye on him all the time. Okay, Layla has picked the loser. She has her name right here in this envelope. I'm gonna set this alarm for 6.30. If the money isn't here in an hour, I'm gonna open the envelope. Do you think we're going to get out of this? Sure, of course we will. Everybody's so scared. I'm really afraid for April. You really like them, don't you? They're the only friends I ever had. Now that's hard to believe. Ever since I was 11, Mom and me have... and I have been getting ready for... Beauty contests, one after another. Do you enjoy it? Am I supposed to? The idea is just to win, isn't it? That's what Mama says. Well, Mama's wrong, Cindy. Why do you say that? Without Mama and beauty contests, I'd still be stuck in pear blossom. When this is all over, I'd like to buy you a cup of coffee and we'll talk about it, okay? I'd like that, Paul. So would I. Big Mama. Country boy, ain't you? Born and bred. 
I could tell. <laughs> you ain't so bad. Neither is that daughter of yours. You ain't gonna hurt her none, are you? Me? I wouldn't pour pepper on a dead possum. Well, maybe you wouldn't. But what about little old Layla? Yeah. Well, now, if I was to get what I want from that little girl of yours, I could see to it that Layla wouldn't hurt her now. You follow me? Big mama. There is no room. We should hold a little beauty contest for the men, huh, Buck? That guy's ridiculous. <laughs> Why not? Now, you mean to tell me that whole time you and Rafe that you never looked at other men? Come on, I've been there, remember? Turn out to be a real man. I ain't got no use for any of them. They're all the same. They just got different faces. Talk to each other. All right. Yeah. You're my own little girl, ain't you? Yes, Mama. When we get out of this, you are going to be the next Miss Beautiful. You are going to be it. And the important thing is to get out of this in one piece. You understand? Because ever since you were born, I've had only one dream for you, child. I know that, Mama. Now, that Mr. Omar, well, he's country folks just like we are. And he fancies you. What are you saying, Mama? What I am saying is that if he wants to have his way with you, you let him have his way. Mama? I ain't never been with a man. It don't mean nothing. It's you just let him. Mama. What? 
I can't do it. I can't do something like that. Damn it, child. I have done worse to get money for your schooling, your training. Why, it is no different from what I did every time your father touched me. Oh, Mama. Now, the important thing is to get out of this alive. You hear? Alive. you hear me? Cindy Louise, do you hear me? Yes, Mama. Do it. Roman should have been here by now. Maybe he took the bread and split. Something went wrong. We got trouble. We'll give him ten more minutes, then we gotta kill him. You're Cindy Louise. No, Mama. I was like a little girl we used to know. Cindy, stop that now. You're Cindy Louise. 
Barrett. Do you hear me? You're Cindy Louise. You're my own beautiful Cindy. We've got to make a move, Layla. We've got to do something. Attention! Attention in the barracks! We have you completely surrounded. You have one minute to come out with your hands up. One minute. What do we do now? Huh? We finish the contest! All right, huh? Who's going to be the first to take the walk outside, huh? Is it going to be you, mister? I wasn't even in the contest. <laughs> no, but your fans would probably like to see you shot anyway. Is it going to be you, hmm? No, it's not you. Go to hell. I have already been there, honey. Thirteen years for murdering the devil. He was my husband. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't take her. Take me instead. Mama, you're just a beat-up old Cadillac, honey. You might still ride good, but you've got oversized tail fins and busted springs. And what about you, huh? What are you so afraid of? Why are you so afraid of Layla, huh? I had a friend just like you in prison. She was a real pretty black girl, and we were real close friends until she double-crossed me. Let her sacrifice that kid. Just stay cool. We can jump this one, kids. Come. We don't have a chance. And that made me really bigoted, and I think that's why you're going to be the first one out. Please don't give me, please. Coward, Fabiani. You can't save her. Well, I'm sure going to try. <laughs> Broad, he was he's a pilot. Oh God, that's the pilot, don't we, fly boy, huh? You're gonna get us out of here. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. We just wasted your pilot, mister. We mean business! So do we! We'll burn you out! Blow it out your gazo, buddy! You make one move, and we start killing the women next! You'll have to negotiate, Faulkner. Stay out of this. Who gave you guys a license to kill? I told you you wouldn't believe me. In the building! There will be no negotiating! Either you come out, or we'll burn you out! You see this, Jack? Will you make one single move and she gets it? And then we start on the others. Do you understand me? You're trying to start your own war here. You don't even know if that vial is there. Do you have a suggestion? Yes, I do. And what is that? This. Hey, hold it. I want to talk. My name is Mike O'Toole. Tell me what it'll take to release those hostages. All right, let's talk. Not here, inside. I want to count heads and see you're still alive. Come slow and stop at the door. Come on. Oh. All right, Buck.
check them out. Please. I want to speak to Captain Fabiani. Over here. Is anybody hurt besides Captain Jessup? Uh, he's dead, and so is the co-pilot. Uh, other than that, everybody's okay. Mr. Falk has said to ask you if you need anything in here. Yeah, we could use some, some water. And some smokes. Tiger over there took my supply of Cuban cigars. Okay, uh, let's talk. What do you want? Just who are you, Buster? I'm chief of security at the airport. What happened to Roman? Roman is in the hospital. They blew him out of the water. He uh, told them where to find you. I knew it! You're wasting time. All right! Layla, you tell them what we want. Taking a couple of hostages back to the plane. We want a million dollars. I'll have to ask them. It's not my decision. You got an hour to put it in the truck. We're taking Fabiani and two hostages. We want safe conduct to Nicaragua. Turn them loose when we get where we're going. I'll report your demands. We want an answer now, otherwise we'll kill another hostage. Understand? I understand. Be a good time to lose Mr. O'Toole. Let's uh, wait and hear what he has to say about Fabiani and the Israeli girl, huh? The pilot and the co pilot are dead. Everybody else is okay. What about Fabiani? He says to save him a cigar because Tiger stole his. Did you see it? In Tiger's pocket. What do they want? They want Fabiani to fly the plane out with two hostages. What else? One million dollars in the truck. How so? One hour. Okay. What do you mean, okay? I mean, okay, they've got it. You don't have one million dollars? Yes, I have. Go back in there and tell them that we'll agree to their terms. What's the drill? I want you to plant some C4 in that truck. You want to burn it? After the cigar is in it. Fabiani and the women will be in there, too. It's not our concern. There's a million dollars. Hello in there. That's far enough, O'Toole. You got what you asked for. How soon? Right now. They'll put the money in the truck. They're insane, you know that.
up or I'll blow you apart. All right. Like it's just you and me. You put on a course for Jamaica. <laughs> Almost had my hands on a million bucks back then. Well, <laughs> at least I got myself a good cigar out of it. I wouldn't open that. Smoke bother you? <laughs> Corona, Corona. Now, I ain't seen one of these in a long time. They say they rolled on the thighs of Cuban girls, huh? <laughs> that cylinder contains enough virus to kill both of us in six hours. Yeah, and what have you been smoking, huh? Look, I'm telling you the truth. Well, you know, they say a man will do anything for a bad woman or a good woman. Don't! 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 Miami arriving passenger, Carol Otori. Please contact the information desk. As for the FAA report, Mr. Box, the aircraft was definitely identified as Flight 609, is that correct? That's right. 
And it exploded on impact, destroying everything and everybody on board. Most definitely. Thank you. Well, except for the death of the two pilots, everybody emerged relatively unscathed. The embassies have been notified, and the two of you might be pleased to know that all of the embassies wanted to compliment you on the way the rescue was effected. It's a nice job. A very nice job. Well, we'll see you around again someday, right? Fox, sir. I hope you burn in hell. Yes, Sid, we're ready. I replaced Miss Israel with a runner-up. I know she's too tall. What would you like me to do? Shrink her? Look, Sid, I can't talk anymore. The press is waiting. Sid, Sid, do me a favor, will you? Next time you have a Miss Beautiful pageant, don't hire me. Attention. Flight 609 to Nassau. Southwest Airways will be boarding in a moment. This is a charter flight for contestants and staff of the International Miss Beautiful Contest. There will be no other passengers. You're not going? No. I've had enough of this beauty business for a while. Well, I miss you very much. I'll miss you. You were very brave. So were you. I heard what happened to Paul. To, um, Captain Fabiani. Yes, sir. He was very nice, but he was a terrible coward. Cindy, Paul was one of the bravest men I've ever known. That's it, let's try it. Come along, child. Shalom. Come on. Now, remember, when we get to the ramp, turn around for the photographer. Remember to smile, show them a little leg, and don't you bite your nails, you understand? Well, come on, Cindy. They won't get your picture if you're late. Come on now. What is wrong with you, child? I'm not going, Mama. What do you mean you're not going? I'm not going, Mama. I'm not a piece of meat. I'm not a child. I'm a woman, Mama. And I'm not going.